space is pretty neat. And they've got a lot of really cool stuff up there. I mean, they've got little rocks, uh, they got big rocks, and the International Space Station. Now, as a child, I was obsessed with the International Space Station. I wanted to go up there, float around, uh, drink my own pee, but I knew that I was just too naive for the harsh realities of space. So I resigned myself to watching from afar. And you can actually see the International Space Station from the ground because it's pretty close and it's so bright. I mean, here's some video I took of it earlier today. But once it goes below the horizon, I have no idea where it went and that scares me. So I'm gonna take a globe and engineer a device that moves a little model of the space station around that globe according to its actual position in that moment. Let's get started. Now, I should note that things like this have been made before. For instance, this tracker points at the ISS, International Space Station, and this tracker points at the ISS, but looks a little bit cooler. Now, I want my device to be different. My tracker is going to move a physical model of the ISS around the globe. This idea presents quite a few challenges. Namely, how am I gonna move the model around the globe, or even how am I gonna get it to stick to the globe in the first place? And the answer is magnets. So I went out to buy a globe, which was harder than I thought. What stores sell globes? I can't find any stores that sell globes. But I eventually found one at Target. And after drilling into it and accidentally cracking it and then fixing it with super glue, I had my working proof of concept. Now it was time to design. So this is what the mechanism, at least for longitude, is gonna look like. So let's talk about what I've just made and how it works. The first thing to understand is latitude and longitude. Latitude and longitude is just a way of describing the position of an object. On the Earth, latitude is how far north or south something is, and longitude is how far east or west something is. Right now, the system that I've made is able to move a magnet east and west. It's able to set the longitude of the magnet. This little motor, called a servo, turns these gears, and these gears turn this axle which turns this arm. On the end of this arm is a magnet, and when you put a globe over the whole thing, it's able to move a magnet on the outside, east and west. Pretty neat. Now, I also need to be able to move the magnet north and south, setting the latitude of the magnet. And once I add that system, we'll be able to move the magnet wherever we want on the globe. That's what I'm gonna do right now. It crashed. Okay, so I can try and run a test here. Open my little level app, and I set this to, well, zero. Then it's gonna be about zero. And then I can set it to like 40 degrees latitude. It'll adjust, 39 to 40, pretty good. And then I can go like uh, 50 and 49. You know, there's an acceptable margin of error there. Okay, so it's time to do the first like actual test of this thing. Um, so I'm gonna put the globe on it and then we're gonna see how it does with the latitude and longitude mechanisms in with a magnet. Um, let's see, we're gonna set just an arbitrary location here to start. So right here is where it should start. It's gonna go to 4040. Oh my gosh, it actually works. That's so cool. Let's find the location of New York. 4174. So it's gonna go hopefully right over here. Oh, that's so cool. I'm now confident that this whole project will work, which is really neat. So I tested it out on a few different locations. Should go right over to Disneyland. Dude, there you go. And then it was time to reveal the final product. Hey, no, 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 oh. we have to get to my part first. Oh, sorry. Okay, so this project is going great, but there's a few issues that we need to fix first. First and foremost, this big jumble of electronics is ugly. Let's talk about that. So all of the electronics right now are on what's called a breadboard. Now, this breadboard connects all of these parts in a way that makes them work together in order to move the magnet. But the issue is that a breadboard really is temporary and it's, it's too big to put into our final product. So I need to make what's called a PCB. A PCB puts all of these parts together in a permanent compact way. It's kind of like a motherboard, except the difference between a motherboard and a PCB is that the PCB doesn't yell at you for not doing your chores.
I need to make a PCB, but I don't have the expensive machinery and expertise to do so. So that's where my friend is gonna help me out here. Hey guys, it's me, Petey. Petey B-Way. Can you tell where this is going? I'm here to tell you about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a made to order custom PCB service. They also provide custom 3D printing and metal machining parts as well. Now Will's gonna use them. Remember, I'm not Will, I'm Petey. Will's gonna use them to make a custom PCB. He can choose the color of his boards, the thickness, the number of layers. PCBWay also has a really fast turnaround time. Their 24 hour production coupled with DHL's two to four day shipping means that Will's gonna get his prototype PCBs like that. So use PCBWay for all of your custom PCB as well as metal machining and custom 3D printing needs. Okay, back to back to you, Will. Wow. Thanks, Petey. Now that we've got the circuit board, let's put it together. Let's go. We got our boards. Look at those. Nice. The process here is pretty simple. Just put all the components on the board. finished putting the board together. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Even though it looks pretty good, that does not necessarily mean that it will work. So I'm going to plug it into the globe. When I provide five volts, this magnet should start moving around unless I did something terribly wrong. Come on. Oh my God. Oh, it worked. Look at that. The movement part of the board at least works. I'm going to check some of the other components. Uh, and then we should be good to reveal the final product. Whoa, oh. we still haven't gotten to my part yet. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So I've made the electronics board and the mechanism, but before I put this whole thing together, I still need to make a little model of the ISS. So I designed a realistic international space station in CAD, printed it and put it together. So I did the math and if I were to make an ISS that was actually to scale to the globe that I have, if I wanted it to be the right size in proportion to that globe, then the length of the international space station model would be about the 40th of the width of a human hair. I actually want to correct myself because I was off here by a factor of a thousand. So the length of the ISS would actually be about the width of a strand of DNA. And here's my math on that. And for my American audience, just to get some perspective, that's about 152 millionth of the length of a football field. And I'm actually not sure that I can make something that small. So I opted for designing a model that's slightly larger. Yes, yeah, so these are the solar panels. Now, obviously I had to skimp out on some details with this model because it's so small and I just can't print details that small. So I had made my ISS model, but something still felt like it was missing. I decided that I wanted to color the solar panels just like on the real ISS, but I'm still not actually sure how to use a paintbrush. So I enlisted the help of my girlfriend, Olivia. Hi. Now that I had all of the pieces I needed, I could finally put the final product together. You excited? You've been waiting for this? Okay, okay, we'll do it. You ready? Sorry, this sheet's kinda long. Ta-da. So this is the final product, and let me show you some of the cool things about it. Uh, first of all, you can see it's a very simplistic design. You can pretty much see like no electronics from the outside, and that's what I was going for. I want the globe to look very unsuspecting. I want it to seem like there's almost nothing special about it at all. So that's why all of the controls and the indicators are actually inside the base. For instance, let's say the International Space Station model isn't on there. There's a little calibrate button under the base, so when I click on that, the magnet returns to this exact spot so I know where it is and I can put the model back on there. And then it'll move back to the ISS position. Something else neat is this little red indicator light down here, so you can't actually see it if it's not on. And that red light blinks every once in a while to tell you when it's gathering the position of the ISS, but we're gonna talk about that later. And I think my favorite part is the fact that this is actually a touch lamp. You probably saw that foil thing that I added to it earlier. Well, that's over here, and when I touch it, 
it lights up. So that's one of my favorite things about it, uh, besides the fact that it, you know, tracks to ISS in real time. Now, this thing is cool and all, but I guess I'm just wondering how it actually knows where the ISS is. By the way, if you're not into the whole like learning thing, I set up a little eye spy that you can do. So try and find these objects in the area around me. And then if you do that, you can comment like, I found all the objects and uh, I'd like recognition for that. So how does this thing know where the International Space Station is? Now, initially I planned on building a complex set of satellites and ground antennas all over the world that communicate with each other and the ISS to determine the actual position of the International Space Station. But just as I finished that design, I realized that NASA already did that for me. And even better, they published the live location of the International Space Station to an API called Open Notify. And if you don't know what an API is, neither do I. So basically, all this computer does is go to this website and grabs these two numbers, the latitude and longitude of the International Space Station, and then converts those into angles for the servos to go to. And that's it. That's how it sets the live position of the ISS model. Also, if you're one of those people who claims that we haven't actually gone to space and NASA is faking all of it, please, please comment that below this video because people will reply to it and it will drive engagement. In fact, even if you do think we have gone to space, just comment that we haven't because I love engagement. So yeah, that's how the thing works. Let's go back to what Will's doing. What is Will doing? When I was a child, I dreamed of becoming an astronaut, but I felt like I was too naive for the harsh realities of space. These are things that we've discussed before, but I think that tonight I'm gonna gaze out on the stars and think about what could have been. Uh, also, I'm bringing the globe. And I have astronaut ice cream. Wait, are you gonna help? Okay. It's wrapped like a real ice cream bar. This is nice. You know what? I wonder where the ISS is right now. Uh, let me check my phone. Looks like it's just passing Europe. Pretty neat. Anyways, um, that's kind of the end of the video. Stick around till after the outro if you want to see some cool uh, time-lapse shots of this thing. Subscribe to my Patreon if you want to help me buy things that cost money. Also, uh, if you do want to look at the ISS with your own eyes, go to this website right here, Spot the Station, and then you can see when the next time is that you'll be able to see it fly above you. Uh, I actually do recommend it. I, I think everyone should do it at some point. It's pretty cool. Also, I want to thank you guys so much for 3,600 661 subscribers that's a huge milestone for me and to celebrate that I did a little challenge for myself which is brush my teeth about that many times over the last five years here's my math on that but yeah that's the end of the video bye